Good morning, everybody. Blessed uh, third Friday after Pentecost. Um, let's gather our hearts and minds as we worship the Lord this morning. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord who has redeemed the world, come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, for the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord who has redeemed the world, come, let us adore him. A humble, contrite heart, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. Sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. But you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion. And rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Then shall they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A humble, contrite heart, O God, you will not spurn. I will rejoice in the Lord, and exalt in my Redeemer. O Lord, I have heard your renown, and feared, O Lord, your work. In the course of the years, revive it. In the course of the years, make it known. In your wrath, remember compassion. God comes from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. Covered are the heavens with his glory. And with his praise, the earth is filled. His splendor spreads like the light. Rays shine forth from beside him, where his power is concealed. You come forth to save your people to save your anointed one. You tread the steed with your steeds amid the churning of the deep waters. I hear and my body trembles. At the sound my lips quiver. Decay invades my bones. My legs tremble beneath me. I await the day of distress that will come upon the people who attack us. For though the fig tree blossom not, nor fruit beyond the vines, though the yield of the olive fail, and the terraces produce no nourishment, though the flocks disappear from the fold, 
and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord and exalt in my saving God. God, my Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet swift as those of hinds and enables me to go upon the heights. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will rejoice in the Lord and exalt in my Redeemer. You ransomed us by your precious blood, O Christ. Nailed to the cross and pierced with the lance, you poured forth immortality for humanity. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. O my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb. You kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me. Like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. For you laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers encircle me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. My wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. And in the midst of your congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel, all you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the kingdoms of the families of the nations bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You ransomed us by your precious blood, O Christ. Nailed to the cross and pierced with the lance, you poured forth immortality for humanity. Reading from the first book of the prophet Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli 
and said, Here I am, for you called me. He said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called him again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He said, I did not call my son. Lie, lie down again. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and he hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be not far away from me, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with the, all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. And worthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Be not far away from me, O Lord, for you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. 
awe came upon everyone because many signs and wonders were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Through the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Through the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. The continuation of the treatise of the Lord's Prayer by St. Cyprian of Carthage. Christ clearly laid down an additional rule to bind us by a certain contractual condition. We ask that our debts be forgiven insofar as we forgive our own debtors. Thus we are made aware that we cannot obtain what we ask regarding our own trespasses unless we do the same for those who trespass against us. This is why he says elsewhere, the measure you give will be the measure you get. And the servant who after his master forgives all his debt refuses to forgive his fellow servant is thrown into prison. Because he refused to be kind to his fellow servant, he lost the favor his master had given him. Along with his other precepts, Christ lays this down even more forcefully with a most vigorous condemnation. He says, when you stand up to pray, if any have anything against anyone, let it go, so that your heavenly Father may also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. You will have no excuse on the day of judgment, for then you will be judged just as you have been judged and you will suffer whatever you have done to others. God bids us to be peace-loving, harmonious, and of one mind in his house. He wants us to live with the new life he gave us at our second birth. As children of God, we are able to abide in peace. As we have one spirit, we should be, able, we should be one in mind and heart. Thus, God does not receive the sacrifice of one who lives in conflict. and He orders us to turn back from the altar and be first reconciled with our brother and sister, that God too may be appeased by the prayers of one who is at peace. The greatest offering we can make to God is our peace, harmony among fellow Christians, a people united with the unity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When Cain and Abel first offered their sacrifices, God considered not so much the gifts as the spirit of the giver. God was pleased with Abel's offering because he was pleased with his spirit. Thus Abel the just man, the peacemaker, in his blameless sacrifice, taught humanity when they offer their gift at the altar they should approach as he did, in the fear of God, simplicity of heart, ruled by justice and peaceful harmony. Since this was the character of Abel's offering, it was only right that he himself should afterward become a sacrifice. As martyrdom's first witness and possessing the Lord's qualities of justice and peace, he foreshadowed the Lord's passion in the glory of his own death. Such then are the ones who are crowned by the Lord and will be justified with him on the day of judgment. 
But St. Paul and the sacred scriptures tell us that the quarrelsome one and the troublemaker, who is never at peace with his brothers and sisters, cannot escape the charge of internal dissension, even though that one may die for Christ's name. For it is written, He who hates his brother is a murderer, nor can he obtain the kingdom of heaven. God cannot abide a murderer. He cannot be united with Christ, who has preferred to imitate Judas rather than Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, and your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we walking in the way of the cross may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, so that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your Holy Spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love, and bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Mighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fill now, O Lord, our prayers and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord announced unto Mary when she conceived by the Holy Ghost, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh 
and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, for thy grace into our hearts, as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, announced by the message of an angel to the Virgin Mary. So by his cross and passion, you may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you all for joining for this third Friday after Pentecost. Just a reminder, Deacon Colleen will be here tomorrow for a pre-recorded morning prayer at 9 o'clock. And then we're back in the church at 10 o'clock for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Hope you have a blessed Friday. Be not afraid. Christ is risen. Have a great day, everybody.